Hello brothers and sisters. It's good to uh, connect again this week before our midweek as we continue to uh, focus on the book of Hebrews and the encouragement from the Hebrew writer to keep moving forward in our faith, to hold on to our faith, to persevere in our faith, to not shrink back, to not go back to uh, the life we previously lived, but to continue to trust God regardless of our challenges, regardless of our circumstances. And so this is a very good uh, lesson for us at this time as we face uh, something totally unprecedented, the pandemic. Uh, hopefully these new vaccines will uh, be available soon and will be uh, effective. And yet, and in the meantime, we uh, have to continue to persevere. And so the book of Hebrews calls us to persevere. And uh, in Hebrews chapter 10, what we'll be, we'll be looking at tonight, it talks about how our guilt is removed. Jesus does the impossible because he sacrifices himself for our sins, because he was a perfect sacrifice, a perfect priest. He's able to remove our guilt. And guilt is a very powerful thing. Guilt brings on shame. We feel guilt when we do something wrong, but if we don't resolve that, if we don't get reconciled with those that we've wronged, especially if we've wronged God, then we feel shame. And the longer shame resides in our lives, the worse we feel about ourselves, the more just this burden of uh, inadequacy and failure and uh, fear of consequences comes into our life. And so the great thing in uh, Hebrews chapter 10 is the encouragement that Jesus is so different from the sacrifices of animals, the sacrifice of bulls and goats, because that didn't remove guilt. But Jesus' sacrifice removes guilt. I would say that there is a great majority of people that you and I know that are struggling with this. They're struggling with a guilty conscience. They're struggling with denying things from their life in the past that uh, they did wrong, but they didn't reconcile. They didn't get right. They didn't uh, repent of, they didn't confess, they didn't uh, make reconciliation with whoever they wronged. They didn't uh, uh, get forgiveness from God. And those things accumulate. And the longer things go unresolved, the longer we don't uh, deal with these different issues that bring us guilt in our lives, the more shame we feel. And so this is a very encouraging passage. This is a passage that uh, the whole Old Covenant people would have longed to heal here. They, they constantly felt guilt because they knew that without continual sacrifice and the continual offering that uh, their forgiveness would uh, uh, not be eternal and yet for you and I our uh, salvation is eternal as long as we stay faithful it says in Hebrews 10 11 through 14, day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies be, to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, he is made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Our holiness, if we are holy people, if we are people that are spiritual and righteous before God, it's because of the sacrifice of Jesus. And we need to embrace and appreciate the grace and the mercy of God. We didn't earn it. We can't work our way to heaven. We've got to just accept this gift, this sacrifice of Jesus. And we've been looking at this for several weeks, chapter after chapter, because God knows that sometimes we're a little stubborn and it's hard to get through to some of us that we really do get a free gift from God, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of guilt removal from our minds and from our hearts. 
You know, it says in verse 19 of chapter 10, Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings. You and I can be assured of our salvation. The chapter ends with a reminder to not uh, go back, to not shrink in faith. It's another one of those warnings uh, in the book of Hebrews. It begins in verse 32. It says, remember those earlier days after you had received the light, when you endured in a great conflict of suffering, Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution, and other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had a better and lasting possession. So don't throw away your confidence. Our brothers and sisters in the first century faced great persecution. It wasn't legal in the Roman Empire to make Jesus the Lord of their life. And so they suffered greatly for their faith. You and I may not have to suffer that much. And so therefore, we have all the more impetus to be faithful, to not shrink back. Some of our problems we, we allow to get overblown in our head. But when you compare them in the big picture of things, they're not as significant as we may think. And so, brothers and sisters, let's have a great midweek. Let's uh, continue to let the book of Hebrews build up our faith and encourage us. There's so much here. It's so rich. Read through it. Read uh, uh, each uh, person can take a turn just reading one of the passages and the points made from that passage and just go around uh, your Zoom call. Let each person participate. And then at the end, let everybody share their aha moment and then their takeaway, what they're going to do because of this lesson for the next week. We want to put the word into practice. We don't want to be dull and just be hearers only, but we want to be doers of God's word. And brothers and sisters, let me encourage you. Thanksgiving's coming, and so we have our coats and can dry. Please bring uh, to the church in the mornings from uh, 9 to 12 uh, while uh, the sisters are here. Please bring your donations for the Coats and Cans Drive. We'll be passing them out from the Impact House. And uh, so we've always uh, done so good at this. And we want to be able to uh, support the community and especially those that are needy in the community. And so uh, please make that a priority uh, for your week. Brothers and sisters, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for continuing to uh, uh, be faithful to God Regardless of not getting as much fellowship together, we all long to be back together. We long for more normalcy in our lives, but we aren't going to be shaken. We aren't going to be discouraged. We're, we're going to take this in stride. We're going to learn the spiritual lessons that we need to learn. We're going to appreciate the Hebrew writer when he warns us to be faithful, and we're going to embrace and embody uh, the sacrifice of Jesus to allow that to purify our minds, purify our conscience, throw off the guilt that could hinder us and help us to stay truly faithful. God bless you, church. Love you very much. Praying for you. Let's be praying for one another. Amen. Take care.